What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I'm going to walk you through actually creating an interior. Um, so this one's going to be a laundry room. Um, I'll link to the picture that I'm using in the notes below. But I just kind of wanted to go through my workflow and what I'm using to model interior. So before I do that I do want to say thank you to Brian Clark for pledging on Patreon. So as you know, Patreon is the place where uh, basically you guys support the show and I'm so thankful for that and that's basically where I uh, where I get the money to create new things every month and to be able to go out there and buy new extensions and do new things and that sort of thing. So thank you very much to Brian Clark. If you're interested in supporting the show, um, you can visit the link in the notes below or go to patreon.com slash the SketchUp Essentials. So let's go ahead and just jump into this thing. All right, so this space is one that uh, I'm basically taking out of an image that I found on House, and I'm just going to base it on that. I'll link to that in the notes below. But um, you, my, my workflow when I create interiors is kind of the same no matter what. But um, I just kind of wanted to walk you through what I do to create a space. So the first thing I do is I kind of rough out my space's width um, or my space's size. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out my default model. And I'm going to start out by just kind of roughing out the size. So in this case, the space is going to be roughly 128 by we're gonna say 90 inches for right now so we're just gonna kind of draw that in there um, that way you've just kind of got an idea of um, you know how big you want this space to be now I can come in here and start dividing it up and drawing my cabinets on my wall and my window and all those different things so I'm gonna start off just by uh, modeling my cabinets and so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start by kind of roughing out the box shapes so in this case, I'm going to assume that we're going to be 36 inches wide by probably 30 inches deep in this case. So, um, and that's going to be kind of the space with the sink in it. So I'm just going to push pull that up and I'm going to go ahead and reverse this so the correct face is facing outward. But I'm going to assume this is going to be probably 36 inches um, high. And the reason this is a little deeper than a regular cabinet would be is because I'm kind of matching the depth of a washing or washer and dryer. But so I'm going to start off and I'm just going to model this. We're going to call this probably 34 inches high for right now. So that's kind of got my my rough shape of my box. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start figuring out um, the rest of the way that that's going to look. And so you can start off and you can kind of draw a guide in here with the tape measure tool just by clicking on the tape measure tool then clicking on this point and kind of drawing this down a little bit. So in this case I'm going to figure that I'm going to have probably we'll call this a seven inch space for my top drawer and then probably what we're going to have is we're going to have something like a one inch or a two inch I'll probably go with a two inch kind of trim piece around the edges before the door starts. So we'll start just by kind of drawing that in here. And, you know, we're going to have the same thing on the top. And I'm just kind of drawing these in with lines. I'm probably going to move this guy down a little bit because I want this to be about six inches deep with my two inch trim piece. So in this case, we'll call this a two inch trim piece here. And you can come in and erase out these extra pieces. And so now what you've got is you've got your drawer and you've got your um, door space down here. And we're going to rough out the bottom as well. So probably figure we've got like a six inch kick. And we'll come in here and figure a four inch kick on the bottom. And you can just push pull that back a little bit. So maybe two inches back. So now you've got kind of your door shape kind of roughed out here. So you can just come in here and you can just detail those in real quick. And one thing you can do if you want is you can double click on this door and you can right click on it and you can make it a component and you can call it cabinet door. And then you can erase out this other piece. And that way what you can do is now that this is a component, now when I come in here and I detail out this one door, whoops. The other one's going to change as well. So I can figure out kind of my door size. I can push pull this back in a little bit. Maybe like an eighth of an inch just to give this a little bit of a 
depth and then you can do the same thing up here and I just activated the push pull tool and I just double clicked because these tools have kind of a memory to them and so when you double click on this then um, it push pulls it to whatever the depth was for the, of the last thing you did so this push pulled this back that same eighth of an inch so now I've got my cabinet doors in here as components I've got my cabinet in here and right now these are all kind of raw faces I may kind of adjust that later and probably what we're gonna do in a little bit is either a model or download some hardware but for the moment I'm not really gonna worry about that so we'll come back and do that with stuff in the 3d warehouse but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this whole thing and I'm gonna go ahead and make it a group and down in the outliner I'm just going to name it we'll call this one sync cabinet so you can see how I'm kind of keeping this organized as I go so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rough out our washer dryer shape here so in this case we're gonna do the same thing actually we're gonna do this a little bit different um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in just by kind of drawing my trim pieces and then uh, extending this back so we're gonna assume that this is probably gonna be we'll call it five inches higher so in this case this is gonna be a little bit higher because it's actually a a washer dryer so you need more space under here so this is gonna be a little bit taller but again just kinda of do the same thing where you're gonna draw like a two inch trim piece here and we're just gonna draw this let's see our width of this entire thing is probably going to be we'll call it 62 inches for right now we may have to adjust this a little bit in a minute but I'm just coming back in and just detailing this whole thing out and then all I'm gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna push pull this back so now I've got kinda of my washer dryer table assembly right here so I'm just gonna triple click on that actually I'm not because I don't want to select the base here so I'm gonna select that I'm gonna make that a group and we'll just call this washer dryer counter and you don't necessarily have to do this this way but I like to to keep everything organized so and then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're going to is we're gonna add our last cabinet piece over here and so in order to do that all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this cabinet and I'm actually just gonna adjust it so I'm going to or I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy and then I'm gonna adjust this so I'm just gonna tap the M key click on this corner and tap the control key to move this across so you can see how that allowed me to create kind of a copy here and you know the one thing that we're probably gonna to wanna to do in this case is we're gonna to have to adjust the size and so probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out these cabinet doors for now and I'm actually going to select this entire side so you can see how I selected the geometry over here and then I'm gonna use the move tool to move it back across so you can see how when I do that when I select that side it's moving all of this geometry over so I can adjust the width of my cabinet really easily then I can come back in here and detail out my cabinet doors so and I can do the same thing where I can make this a component so in this case we'll call this smaller cabinet door just so there's no confusion and then we'll make a copy of this across and we're probably gonna have to flip these in a minute but we won't worry about it for right now so I've got my two inch trim piece in here so now you can see how I've got my uh, my base cabinet in here and the one thing I'm not liking about this is I need to come in here and draw my trim piece across the bottom so this is gonna have a wood trim piece across here and you can push pull this back to give it some depth if you want to you know and another thing you can do if you don't have a ton of cabinets is if you don't like the way this looks like if you want different trim sizes you can definitely come in here and adjust those so and now now that we've got kind of our base cabinets in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw our uh, uppers so in order to do that probably what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna go ahead and draw my back wall so in this case I'm gonna assume probably my wall in this room is we'll call it eight feet high so we'll draw this back wall in here so we have an idea of how tall everything is 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, tape measure tool to create a dimension up here. And I'm going to go ahead or uh, to create a guide up here. And I'm going to go ahead and say this gap at its tallest point is going to be one foot six inches thick. Oh, and the other thing we probably need to do is we need to come in here we need to make this taller and this means we're going to have to adjust our cabinet doors but that's okay so you can see how i did the same thing i did before where i selected all of this geometry and then i just move it up and so now i'm going to come back in here and i'm going to adjust my drawer no i'm not going to adjust my drawer so we'll just kind of redraw our cabinet door in here. And then we'll just redo our offset. And again, we can push this back a little bit to give it some depth. And then what we can do is we can just kind of draw some guides in here to see where, to see where our upper cabinets are gonna go. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing or I'm drawing another guide and then I'll draw this out and I'll just kind of rough out my cabinet shape by doing that so and there's a couple ways you could do that you could just uh, kind of draw all the little parts and pieces in or you could just draw this and push pull it and so in this image all of these cabinets have some kind of crown molding across across them so we want to make sure we account for that so this kind of looks like some six inch crown molding so we want to make sure we don't start our doors until six inches down so you can see how i drew a guide six inches down so i'd have a space for my crown molding and so now you can come in here and start doing the same thing you can just detail out your trim and then you can start drawing your doors and so in this case we'll call this upper cabinet door make a copy of it across and we'll give it a little bit more of an offset and then push pull it back just a bit so we may end up coming in here and making these a little a little deeper but for now we'll just push pull them back an eighth of an inch so and then same kind of thing we're just gonna draw a dimension or we're, we're going to draw a guide right across this space. And we'll just rough out this cabinet. We'll right click to revert the, reverse the faces and then we'll push pull it out. So and again same kind of thing we'll go ahead and account for our trim. And then in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to divide it. I'm going to divide it into three segments. So when I divide it into three segments, what that'll give me is that'll give me my shelving areas. So now I can come in here, rough out my trim piece. So I'm going to say this is one inch down, two inches up, and then I can just draw a line across. For each one of these, I can erase out the center line. And then I can select this use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy of it up real quick. So we'll just push pull this back to our back wall and then all I have to do is activate the push pull tool and double click on those and you can see how I was able to extrude those all the same depth really quickly. You know and the one thing I kind of messed up over here is I didn't put this in a group yet so we're gonna right click we're gonna make this a group and we'll call this upper cabinet wide. And then we'll just kind of do the same thing we did before. We'll use the move tool in copy mode to copy this over. And then we'll just adjust the box that we have. So you're going to have to get rid of these cabinet doors, but then you can come in here and select everything else and use the move tool to move this geometry over. And then you can kind of draw your doors back in again. And you can see how I'm not really detailing out the interior of these cabinets. Uh, you definitely can, or there's definitely extensions like uh, like GKWare Cabinet Maker is a good one where you can actually like draw super detailed cabinets if you want to do that. But 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this upper shelving unit, right click on it and group that as well, and we'll just call this upper shelf. So I'm going to split this video up into a couple parts. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think of what I got so far. Um, you know, is this helpful to you? Is there some stuff you'd rather I covered? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Uh, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.